We're starting lesson one, day three with Jet. Although we haven't been doing this every day because of things that have gotten away over the last two weeks. The dog is ready for day three, which is planted distractions. So we've made it pretty simple today. There's an overturned bucket out at point C. And one of my shirts on a post on the stump at point B. Nothing overwhelming. But it's a planted distraction. Something for the dog to notice and say, huh, what's that? But not so overwhelming that he flings himself at it. <clears throat> Although, with this fella, he may fling himself at it. And if he does, that's fine. He can handle it. He's pretty young, eight months old, very boisterous and outgoing. So let's get to work. You want to stop right there for a second. I think when people start and they have a young exuberant dog like this and that happens within the first pass, they get frustrated and quit or give up. Or they get angry with the dog and take it out on him. It's not the dog's fault, he's learning. We just have to keep doing this calmly the same way until the dog figures it out.
you're still watching. I just okay released him, which means he's at liberty. But I want to share some words with the camera. And he saw a little birdie over there and started to go. That's not in the okay release. He doesn't get to do that. So there are some restrictions on that. If you're still watching and you started from the beginning, you should have seen a difference in the dog from the first pass to the last pass. A huge difference. On day three, we go from not only planting distractions, at least 15 feet past our stopping points. I was actually a little closer to them because it was just a bucket and a shirt. But we require the dog to move within five feet of us. Preferably over here, but we'll get there. And you saw it start to develop in about the third to last pass. I really noticed it in the second to last pass. And the last pass from A to C to B back to A was pretty much perfect. I couldn't ask for more. So we stopped right there. But if you let that first pass get you so frustrated that you quit, you're never gonna get to the last pass. Days one and two, we don't even have distractions. It's doing something you've been doing your whole life, walking in a predetermined pattern from one specific point to another point that you've already marked out, keeping your arms and hands in a fixed position. On days one and two, your only goal is not to get tripped up. Stop flailing around, just walk. Days three and four, it's the same. We're just staging more distractions. And we're requiring that the dog, if he departs more than five feet, the if then, if he's more than five feet away from us, if he's forsaking me in the forsake of something else, I'm turning and going back to my last point. It really is that simple. Very, very simple. We'll see you tomorrow.